What's going on, y'all? So y'all, give me a second. Like, people really got me all the way up, okay? I just... All right, Real Housewives, you see how I switched the mode right quick? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to pop it on, pop it off, okay? Let me tell you something. People really got me fucked up, all right? Listen, I'm going to try not to curse so much. Girl, fuck that. Fuck that. Anyway, and it ain't even got nothing to do with this. I'm talking about some real life shit. Um, anyway, people just like to play on your intelligence, and I just really don't have time for it. Anyway, so let's get into it. Y'all see this little shoulder action right here I'm giving y'all? Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me fix my stuff. Okay, y'all can't have all that much. It's a little bit too intimate. Let me close this up like this. Okay. But anyway, so we are back again for another episode review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Girl, this season 13, episode um 14, if you got it, haunt it. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Come on, check up on it. Bitch, that's how I read it. That's how I read it, okay? But uh, anyway, so um, we get into the episode, and we see Marlo and Kenya. They're hanging out. And I was like, to be quite honest, like they said, Marlo and Kenya were friends or Kiki buddies or whatever back in the day before things kind of went left, when things went left with Nene. And I don't know. I can't remember or pinpoint exactly where it went left with Marlo and Kenya, but they were cool at one point. So it is nice to see them back together for me. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, the beat between them and the shade between them, it was getting old for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it was cool to see that, you know, Marlo had invited her down to her showroom. She has this showroom called La Arcade, you know, or no, La Arcade. Girl, La Lee Archive. There you go. Bitch, I'm going to picture trying to sound French and shit and pronouncing it wrong and whatever. But uh, anyway... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> she's there. Fallon is there. You know, basically, she's renting out some of her old digs. You know, her clothes and her shoes, whatever. She's not buying them, selling them, or whatever. She's renting them out. And like Kenya said, this is more so her lane. Truth be told, I was surprised. And of course, they gonna um play the clip of her. You know, busting in on Kenya. Uh, I mean, on Marlo's little hair uh situation event that she had. And even Marlo was like, so you ain't come up in here with no marching band or whatever. That was a cute little dig. I like that. Uh, you know, so they getting along for the most part. They're not best of friends, but they're trying to get back their friendship. And this is like a step desk, you know, getting back to that. And, um, you know, Fallon was there and she wanted to invite the girls to her Halloween party that she's having at her house. And, you know, want to be sexy like that. And Kenya, you know, I think Kenya did the right thing by asking what the attire should be because she don't want to offend her husband and be have her ass all out in front of all these men. If there's going to be men there, that's not, that's, um, you know, together and all this stuff. And she was like, girl, please don't worry about that. My husband ain't even there. He's going to be booted off the property. Okay. I was like, all right, Fallon, you got it like that do it like that then so you know squished all of that those concerns um you know unfortunately marlo's not going to be there because she has some more things to some previous things that was already planned to do so that was that you know fallon i don't do y'all like fallon i actually do like fallon because so far you know even though we haven't seen her as much this season as they tried to hype it up in the blogs or whatever that we was getting a couple of new girls besides the toy and uh drew well a couple do means two so technically we did get that a few whatever they threw the fallon name out there like she was really you know going to be like a consistent cast member or friend of the show and she really hasn't um, from what they shown us, you know, she probably been around more than what they shown us. So, um, they're going to do that. And when they left, you know, Marlo and Kenya start talking about their relationship. And then she started talking about Marlo brings up the fact what's going on between you and Latoya, because I know y'all supposed to be friends or whatever, but, um, you know, something about her just rubbing me a little bit raw because, you know, she out here telling your business and shit. We was over there at Shamia house and she told the girls somehow marriage came up there and she told the girls that you was getting a divorce. You filed for a divorce from Mark and that he up here asking you for alimony. Now this ain't the first time that she done said some shit that kind of rubbed Kinky wrong, you know, her being cool with Portia or whatever, kissing on Portia and all that stuff. Because you was kissing on Portia and you knew that I had a girl crush on you. <laughs> you know that I like you, bitch. Can you stop playing? <laughs> I tell you about these straight girls that don't know, girl. 
<laughs> come to a real bitch. Let me tell you something. Kia, I'll turn your ass out. Let me stop. Um, bitch, I've been told this mouth can do damage. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it just comes out. It just comes out. Child, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It just... It just blurts out. Okay, so, you know, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Anyway, moving on from there. We, we ain't even 10 minutes into the uh, review and I already done started. Um, moving in from there. Um, you know, she just feels some type of way. She thanks Marlo for telling her that. And I was like, that's cool. You know, Marlo, I feel like she did the right thing because, you know, and I wish Marlo would have said that... Uh, all the girls was like, no, don't say that shit. Even though it was for the people, you know, and Kenya whole thing is, why would you say that in front of a group of girls that you already know that really don't fuck with me like that, okay? And like Portia said last week, even though Portia was like, no, don't say that, you know, I can't tell you my business because you'll fuck around and tell my business and confess your testimony in church or whatever and it be my testimony and all that stuff, you know? But then she said in the confessions, now I got ammunition. You just gave me ammunition, see? Why would you do that? You put the bullet in the gun, you know, uh, at least one of them. Then, um, you know, they taking pictures and Marlo let it be known that Kenya was the first person that she let in the showroom. I was like, oh, so we actually trying to be friends, friends for real. Okay, moving on. Y'all looking at uh, Aretha Franklin show Genius on National Geographic with Cynthia Revo? You know, the family said don't watch that shit, but I'm going to watch it on DVR. Anyway, moving on from that, because the movie ain't coming out until God knows when. Moving on from that, um, <clears throat> and what, what was happening? Drew. Drew has a conversation. First of all, I'm just wondering why Drew Mama's still here. I know he was in the pandemic, but people are flying. She could have flew her ass back to goddamn Chicago. Why is she still up in the house? Why is she still up in the house? But they had a little decent conversation. Drew, you know, has to go down to New Orleans for some business stuff. And she decided that she wanted to take the girls down there to New Orleans, make it a trip or whatever. And, you know, they have family down there. And she know about some of her people, but she wants to know more so about her mother's side of the um, of family or whatever. And, you know, this is being prompted by the fact that her oldest son, Josiah, uh, his father is trying to get back into the picture and she don't know whether or not she should let him. And so we got her thinking about, you know, family history, genetics and all that stuff. And we get this interesting story. I found it interesting. You know, the mom, because I'm into all that stuff. I look at find your roots and stuff with Henry Louis Gates and all that shit. You know, it'd be real fun. It'd it, it be real fascinating. Okay. Um, the mother, you know, she was talking about how um, they used to travel from Chicago to New Orleans and, you know, back in the day when segregation was happening real bad and it was the white and black water fountains. It was some gas stations that they couldn't go to, some hotels. They couldn't sleep in hotels or whatever. It was very much the Green Book. If you saw Green Book or you know anything about the Green Book or even Lovecraft Country when um, the main character, uh, Hippolyta's husband was making those uh maps of places where black folks it's safe for black folks to go it was very much giving me that and you know she was talking about that and um how um they did have white people in their families her grandfather's father was white but this is talking about her adopted parents and i didn't know that her mother was adopted and her mother felt so strongly about saying, regardless of whether or not she's adopted, that's her family. That's her family. Regardless of what DNA said, that is her family. And she don't give a fuck about her dad coming out to there or whatever, trying to learn more about him because uh, it's been 70 plus years. He probably did anyway, and he never reached out to try to find her. I said, oh, mama had a lot of hurt right there, but I understand. I understand. That's going to be interesting. So now Drew needs to figure out what she want to do with her um, son's father because he was in jail when um, she got with Ralph and then he's out of jail. Now he's trying to reconnect. Let him reconnect, but do it slowly. So then we get Kenya and her cousin Shay, you know, Shay asking, listen, what you going to do with Fat? Uh, not Fallon, but, um, Latoya, she was like, I'm gonna let her sit where she at right now. She was like, no new friends, no new friends at this point. Uh, she'll deal with her later. Meanwhile, um, Cynthia and Mike, you know, they're walking to go to lunch or whatever. And of course, they're both glowing. They're both basking in the aftermath of being a, a newlywed couple, you know. Oh, excuse me. And so, um, she was like, babe, oh my God, you're like glowing. 
<laughs> you look like a husband. I was like, go ahead, Cynthia. You know, y'all, you know how we get when we get up into new relationships. And yeah, I guess it's the same way when y'all get married, even though y'all been seeing each other. It's just a different aura, a different level of love that you have and all that stuff. So it was cute. You know, um, Melissa, uh, Melissa, what the fuck that come from? Cynthia is a little corny anyway, so it was cute. Uh, she was talking about the message that uh, Leon had posted. You're a supermodel, a super mom, and now you're a super wife. You know, uh, love you both and all that stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, listen, Leon. Yeah, Leon. Okay. Meanwhile, like I see it, ladies. I see it, lady. For those that like them, I see it. Uh huh. That voice will get you every time. Anyway, um. Moving on from that, you know, she was just talking. It, <laughs> Mike was talking about how long her vows were. It was like damn near 10 minutes long, and they put the timer up. I said, Cynthia, you freestyle that shit, okay? She got up there talking about his smell, talking about what they watch on TV. Girl, we Netflix and chill all the time, and we actually Netflix and chill. We don't fuck. We Netflix and chill, okay? We finna start ratchet and everything. I said, girl, no, okay? Um... But um, she gets a call from Drew, and Drew was telling her about the fact that her agent had her down there in New Orleans, and she wanted to show the girls a real girl's trip, okay? I said shade, you know, and she said, I'm going to have us on a private plane that Ralph uh brought for us. Pretty sure that he did, if y'all did, because I'm pretty sure you could. Let me stop. Let me stop. That wasn't necessary. Anyway, um... <laughs> I gotta be a little shady sometimes. But uh, anyway, so they do all of that. And she was like, I'm gonna even invite Kenya to show her exactly how you host a trip and all that stuff. I was like, whoo, y'all can't leave the shade alone, girl. All right, but that's basically what's gonna happen. Everybody's gonna go on a girl's trip. Mike said, just as long as you leave Bolo, you know, it's all to the good. And he gotta go back to LA from some stuff. And he already thinking about buying a house out there in Atlanta. And at this point, Cynthia said, listen, that's my man. I don't care. Okay. If he want to go in a tent, bitch, I'm following him. I said, all right now. I don't know too much about that, but all right now. So then we get Drew. Um, she goes over to talk to Ralph about everything that's going on. You know, she going down to New Orleans. She taking the girls. And then this whole thing about, uh, Josiah's father, biological father, wanting to come back in his life and, you know, the way that she feels about it. Um, and the fact that, you know, she gives us a little bit of history because she said Josiah, the only father that he really knows is Ralph. You know, she said, um, Josiah's father went to prison before he was even born. She went and took Josiah to visit him in prison. Um, you know, when he was age two and then I think she said recently he, she took him or whatever, but he didn't really understand what was going on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And the only father that he really knows at this point is Ralph. And he was, uh, you know, asked if he want to see his father, his bio father. And, you know, he basically said no. Now, see, I thought she was putting on when she said that. Because, you know, sometimes parents can exaggerate, okay? You know, but um, she was tearing up about that because she just don't know which way that she should go with it. And then to hear the boy say no and all that stuff. It's a lot, you know, because she was just saying, like, you know, you you basically about to disrupt a lot of stuff that he's already been used to, you know, just having Ralph in his life. And now you got another person coming in saying, I'm your father and I'm trying to get to know you. And, you know, it can be confusing to a kid. And that's where she's coming from. And, you know, Ralph, he's been through the neglect of a father, you know, growing up. And he don't want that to happen to Josiah. And he's actually championing you know, Josiah getting to know his father. And so they go over there to talk to the boy. And, you know, when they're asking him about it, he's just adamant and just automatically, like, no thinking about it. Do you want to see your dad? No. Do you want to talk to him? No. Are you sure? Yes. Um, Like, in the future? Okay, well, in the future, maybe. But at this point, no. I was like, wow. You know, like, that scene kind of got to me. It just brought up a lot of dead. Like, it, it is so crazy how a lot of us have daddy issues. And if you watch my videos and heard me talk about my issues with my father or whatever, you already know, like, I, 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 I'm, I'm a grown-ass woman and still dealing with him. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can, I can admit that. And, um, my relationship with my father hasn't been consistent for the past 30 years. Okay? You know, um... It's just, it's, it's practically non-existent, okay? At least I know who he is. Um, I know where he lives at. I do have his number, but do we communicate? No. Do he reach out like that? 
no. So, like, that really made me sad to see, you know, a father that is trying to come back into his child's life. And he was out of the child's life for a circumstance that he probably could have avoided. But, unfortunately, it put him in jail. And then, you know, that messed up his chances to get into real relationships with him. And then the way that um, Drew feels about it, you know, hoping that he's still doing right and don't let it be a one-time thing or you come into my son's life and then you disappoint him and then you exit out. That's her fear. I, 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 I Shout out to all the parents out there that got kids that... Y'all, y'all gotta deal with child emotional state, and y'all have to deal with child kids emotional state, and that is just too much for me to bear right about. That. <laughs> People are like you want kids, girl? No, I can't do it right now, not right now, not yet. So it's time for Fallon's little Halloween party, or whatever. She turned the house into a little haunted house or whatever. Cynthia was the only one that was scared, okay? So the girls came dressed up. You know, Cynthia came dressed as hand sanitizer cats. What's the theme for Drew and like a cheetah or something for uh, a leopard or something for um, Candy? Okay. Uh, Shamia came as an astronaut. I was like, mm, compared to everybody else, I, she could have did a little better, but that's cute. Um, you know, Fallon herself was Medusa and uh, Latoya finally came and she was, you know, the mermaid or whatever. And then Kenya showed up before Latoya, but Kenya showed up as a Native American. I guess Kenya missed the memo about how people feel about that these days and how they feel that's appropriation of cultures. And, you know, that's problematic for anybody outside of that culture to be dressed up for a costume. You know, it's kind of disrespectful. You know, even Drew pointed it out. It was like, am I the only one that sees this stuff that she does and stuff like that? And when I saw it, I was like, eh, I know some people going to have a problem with this, okay? That wouldn't have been, I thought it was lazy. I thought it was a lazy costume. Besides of the fact of the, you know, cultural implications of it and the problematicness of it, I just thought it was a lazy costume. I didn't like her costume and I didn't like Shamia's costume, but, you know, neither here nor there. Um, so, Toya gets there, okay? Uh, first of all, they was a little confused as to what was going to happen at this party. You know, Kenya said, this is what it is. I mean, damn, I thought, you know, something else was going to pop off or whatever. That haunted house was it. You know, it took her three days to put it together, but shit. You know, I would have felt the way, like, what else we going to have? Where's the music? Where the food at? Girl, Cynthia said, where's the food at? Now, this little food that she got, um, Candy can eat all this by herself. <laughs> Bad you earlier in the episode, Candy was working out because she had gained uh, like 20 pounds or whatever and she had to lose the weight because she just got a new movie role and she told the girls that as well. Here's where things almost took a turn. So, um, we find out that Drew and Latoya, you know, they got this love-hate relationship or like-dislike relationship. I ain't gonna call it love-hate, like-dislike. That's a lot of strong words in a one sentence. Um... She was like, we had the party get the nieces and, you know, we went from being cool to arguing and then for her ending up at my house. Drew said, now nah, what had happened was uh, the bitch was drunk as fuck. She was like, bitch, you was tipsy too. She was like, okay, and but I had a driver, okay. Drew made sure to clear that up. No, I was not driving. I had a driver and I was like, let me drive her to her, drop her off at her house or whatever, you know. And she said, regardless of what issues we got going on, she don't want to see nobody get hurt by going out there doing some fucked up shit in an inebriated state. So that was nice on Drew's part. But what got me was when Latoya came in and she complimented Fallon on her house and said, this is what a house that a 65 year old would get, give you or what have. It's not, and I know some people be like, y'all be taking it too serious or whatever. I don't give a fuck, baby. It's not, it's, it's unwarranted. Okay. Like she's been cracking on Fallon about the fact that, oh, you look like you would be the type that'd be with an older man. And now, cause her husband is 56 years old. Now she's cracking on the fact that the house is by somebody that would be 65 years old. And then you get up in your feelings a little bit because I'm like, was she already drunk when she got there? Because she was a little too turned and talking about some, you know, where is the drinks? I want some drinks or whatever. In this big ass kitchen, you ain't got no maid or something that can serve us drinks or whatever Fallon said no but what you can do is you can get up and you can go over there and get the drinks just like everybody else did okay but Fallon you dumb as hell because I wouldn't have got my ass up and got her no damn drink you wouldn't have got your a, a, a drink and she was like um 
See, that's what, you know, people that got money don't do shit like that. That's what broke bitches do, something like that. I said, all right, Fallon. Fallon get it under current, you know what I'm saying? But I just didn't like the way that she was acting, and it wasn't just me who didn't like it. Candy didn't like it. Like, you can't come in and disrespect somebody's house like that. Get your ass up and get a drink everywhere you go. And then gonna say something, oh, she from the hood, she from the hood or whatever. She just got here and all this stuff. She from the hood. She know what it's about. Bitch. Bitch, where you from? Okay, like, I hate that. Quit trying to put down people in their circumstances. Like, it's it's like, and, and, and you want to know what makes me mad about LaToya when she says this stuff? She try to make it and hide it behind and use the excuse of, well, I'm Trinidadian, and this is the way I talk, and this is the way we do. We're brash people, and we come out, and we say what we feel, and all this stuff. That don't mean that that shit is right, Okay. Kenya took her to the side after she made a whole production about the fact that Kenya hasn't been talking to her, hasn't been calling her. First of all, they was confused about the fact that Kenya came in and said Marlo wasn't going to be there because she had some shit to do. Oh, so you Marlo mouthpiece now, huh? Hmm, interesting. That's what they was like. But anyway, she took her to the side and was basically like, you know, why are you telling these girls my business, especially these girls that um don't like me? Well, they was up in there trying to talk stuff about you, and I don't know the history between you and uh, Portia, but she a cool girl, and I was just putting that out there so that they can see that you're not as bad as, as they trying to make it seem and all this stuff. And at one point, you know, um, King said, what they was trying to say? Like, what have I done? She was like, girl, I don't know. I don't know. Or something like that. She kind of elevated her voice. Okay. And King said, first of all, that's not what we're going to do. I don't talk. I don't scream at people. You're not going to scream at me. Well, I'm Trinidadian. There we go again. I'm Trinidadian. This is how I talk. And if you don't like how I talk or whatever, that means that you don't like me and we can't be friends. I said, girl, get, give it up. Give it up. Latoya annoys the hell out of me. And I see she wasn't bothering me for the past couple of episodes or so, but she back on that shit list. So, um, Kenya and, um, Toya still had this conversation and basically it comes down to Kenya up in his feelings and her feelings because, you know, Toya is getting close to Portia and I guess, you know, Portia is her sworn enemy and she was like, y'all kids. <laughs> Kenya, you is really mad. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's funny to me. It is funny to me because I'm like, are y'all really serious? This is childish. Grow the fuck up. We all know the issue between Kenya and Portia. But when she tell it to Toya or whatever, she make it seem like it's because Toya was over there with Portia and they was click clacking on Lake Charles. Bitch, stop it. <laughs> because that's what Toya going to tell Portia. She's just mad because we kiss. <laughs> I think that shit is so funny. Like, Kenya, you just want to be mad. But, girl, I just understand the fact that Kenya has every right to be frustrated at Toya for telling her business, especially to people that she already know. And then Toya did kind of make it. Now, refresh my memory. Were they really just talking shit about Kenya or just saying that she shouldn't be talking about going hard on the fact of trying to find out who fuck with Bolo and putting it out there and making it such a big deal. That's what I thought that was going on. But, um, you know, that's what was happening. She said, I was defending you and all this stuff. And since Candy told me about it and, you know, they played the clip, Candy did bring it up in the conversation that they had. I figured that it was okay to say. No, no, Kenya and Candy are cool. Either way, Kenya told Candy. That's how she knew about it. And Kenya told you. So that's how you know about it. Y'all are cool. And if y'all shared it amongst each other, that's fine because y'all cool or whatever. But then you're going to share it amongst some people that could use it as ammunition to get at her that you already realized that don't get along. Okay? It don't take a rocket science to realize that Portia and Kenya don't get along. So why say it in that group like that? All right? You just, and, and you randomly brought it up. It didn't need to be brought up at all, even in defense of her. That had nothing to do with it. And like Portia was telling Tori, Toya, none of this got nothing to do with me. So what are you talking about? Because at this point, while they was out there, Portia did come in. And let me tell you something. Candy went in on that outfit. Now, I thought I said that um, Kenya, I ain't really like Kenya outfit because it was late. Yes, it was. We're not doing the Native American shit. When Portia saw that shit, she said, I thought we passed this. And, you know, it was a little lame, okay? We're not doing the Native American shit, which is correct, you know? Um, But... <laughs> I said, Portia, 
Bitch, she said, that's why I'm glad I got my shit from Party City. Because Candy said, listen, bitch, when I saw Portia and that little kitty cat shit, I thought she could have did so much better. I thought she was going to come paint it down, bitch, okay? I ain't like none of the shit. Bitch, I ain't like it either. She kept it cool, calm, and collected like she was going to her little kid's, a little kid's uh, Halloween party. And she was just trying to be decent mama. That's what she looked like, okay? I said, oh, what type of shit is this? No shade, Fallon. You know, Fallon got all up in her chest or whatever, you know, because they was asking what King and Toya asked. She was like, fuck that bitch, first of all, because that bitch come up in here talking about some, you know, uh, this the house uh, that a 65-year-old dating a fucking 65-year-old will get you or some shit like that. And it was like, oh, but first of all, let's get the age right. It's 55. I was like, first of all, it's 56, but okay, you know. And I was like, you know, um, Fallon had got a little hood in her. Uh, she got a little guttural in her throat. I was like, ooh. Oh, okay, Fallon. Fallon can probably throw down with the on um, the best of them. You know, it went from... <laughs> this is my home to bitch don't fucking talk about my motherfucking man like that who comes up in somebody's house and disrespect that goddamn man like that you don't disrespect a man huh i said oh i love it when i love it when y'all women change y'all voice like that oh <laughs> it just makes me giggle <laughs> That color switching shit. I said, bitch, go ahead and do that shit. I'm going to give you cute when I need to give you cute. But I'm going to give you gutter when I need to give you gutter, bitch. Okay? I said, all right. You know, give it to him. You know? Uh, and everybody is trying to understand what the fuck is going on with Toya. Like, why would you do some shit like that? Because, you know, like uh, Cynthia said, if you would have came into my house and you would have said some shit about that about my man or whatever, bitch, you would be down at the bottom of the ocean. I said, all right, 50 cent. Okay? You know? And so, when they came back from talking or whatever, um, Toya said, well, bitch, I'm out. She was like, they was like, why you going? She was like, because, bitch, I'm bored. <laughs> now, the only reason why I'm laughing and I'm going to give it to Toya because, bitch, like, when Portia came up in that motherfucker, Portia said, this it. <laughs> Portia said, this it. Now, the way that they was talking, she made it sound like it was going to be a whole bunch of people here. It was going to be live. It was going to be vibing, everything. Girl, they said they've been sitting there for an hour talking about shit. Okay? That's what it is. And Drew said, bitch, if I would have known it was like this, I would have went, um, would have stayed home and lied and said, I just need to stay home like Marlo shit. Okay? But, um, you know, Kenya didn't want to uh, walk, uh, what's that girl name? Latoya out. She was like, Portia said she'll walk you out, so let Portia do it. Girl, Kenya is really mad. <laughs> Kenya is really, quote unquote, mad, okay? She fake mad <laughs> about that kiss, girl. <laughs> Kenya, bitch, if you want to kiss the girl, kiss the girl right there. Mwah, little kiss the girl. Sha la 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 la, don't be shy. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you something. Mermaid. Okay, Little Mermaid. I'm so mad she came as the Little Mermaid. Y'all know that is my favorite Disney movie. Girl, that was my favorite Disney movie since I was a kid, okay? Bitch, put that shit on and I would just zone the fuck out. Anyway, um, girl, Kenya, your fake lesbian ass, your fake bad curious ass. It's cute, dog. <laughs> I never would have saw that storyline come. I said, this is what we want with. So Portia walks out and they out there talking and all this shit. And I'm just like, oh. Let it go. Just let it go. Latoya needs her fucking ass beat, okay? I don't give a fuck if you're Trinidadian. I don't give a fuck if you're whatever. I don't give a fuck if you're used to this and people are used to letting you just talk and say whatever the fuck you want to. One day you're going to roll up on the wrong person and you're going to say the wrong shit to them and they're going to pop you dead in your motherfucking mouth and then they're going to stump a mud hole in your ass, okay? Because that's exactly what the fuck you need. Bitch, first of all, before I get into that, let's get into the fact that Portia actually knew what Fallon was dressed as Medusa, okay? I said, girl, I didn't know you knew that because, <laughs> you know, Portia... Bitch, it comes and goes. It comes and goes. One time she'll be there. Next time you'll be like, girl, what? Okay, that's how it be. But they was outside talking. Kenya was, ready, was about to go. She asked Fallon to, um, you know, take her out to the front, you know, to so she can go. And so they see that Toy was still there. And, um, you know, Toy was like, well, let me get ready to go. Fallon was like, girl, why you going? She was like, because it just felt like the energy is off or whatever. And Fallon kept it 100% real. Well, if you felt like the energy is off, it was because you came in and you just disrespected my husband in my house. You know, that's what you did. Well, girl, fuck your house and all this stuff. Woo, woo, woo. You know, she just got real gutter with it. And I just didn't understand this animosity that she has, okay? And yeah, you know, Fallon was calling her a broke bitch and all that stuff or whatever because she came at her the way that she came at her. So I'm not even mad at that but my whole thing is 
you don't come into somebody's home and disrespect it for whatever reason, okay? And especially if they invited you there on good faith and they're, what, like, she does this. This is how she come off. And I don't see how people don't see this. The ones that's, like, taken up for Latoya, like, that behavior is disgusting. Like, that girl invited you into her home when she didn't have to and you came in and right off the back you disrespected it. And you disrespected her and you disrespected her husband. For what? You did that the first time that you saw her and you wanted to scare behind a joke the truth is every fucking joke is some truth to it there's some truth to it there's some truth that you coming out in your heart that you feel that's why you want this that that's why you want to disguise it as a joke that's the truth that you want to say okay and so you saying all this and then at one point you're walking away and you're hollering back at fallon fallon's getting upset you pushing her button and then fallon goes at 30 i'm 31 years old before i turned 31 i had three sons and then she said about three different baby daddies and all that shit and i said bitch what the fuck was that what the fuck was that like how come nobody has fucked this bitch up yet like who did the who did the casting process for this show like, you didn't see that she was problematic as fuck. You know, she's a colorist, okay? You didn't see that. You know, that was an old video that she put up that she, I think she deleted now. You, you don't see how she don't get along with people. And everybody say that she don't get along with people. You see how much of a problem starter and a shit starter she is. Is it? Did you really need her on this show for drama? Did you need drama that bad that she's turning people off? I've never seen so many people dislike a person on reality TV like this as a whole, okay? And everything that she's... I can see if somebody was attacking LaToya. Nobody is attacking or coming for LaToya. She is just... She came on this show all wrong, okay? She didn't even give us a chance to actually like us, like her. She probably bet it on the fact that, you know, she's on YouTube and she got a following on YouTube and they will follow her on there and that'll be it. No, bitch, you got a bigger audience that's looking... Uh, um, <clears throat> probably looking, girl, I don't know the ratings for Real Housewives, but either way, you got more eyes that's probably looking on you that never saw you before, and you're leaving a nasty taste in their mouth because you're a nasty person. Girl, Fallon went crazy. I said, let the bitch go. Let the bitch go. I said, Drew talking about something, the bitch is always drunk, okay? And if she don't stop this behavior, she's going to wind up hurting somebody, and she might hurt herself, okay? And that's some real shit. You're going to get yourself in a situation that you ain't going to be able to talk your way out of, and you're going to get your mouth popped, okay? And we're trying to avoid that. Medusa, I don't know why you was doing all that shit over that bitch, okay? Don't ever let a bitch let you, you know, lose your shit in your own house like that. And her husband had to pull her back. Girl, made everybody uncomfortable and left. I said, that don't make no sense. But anyway, that's the Real Housewives. I don't know why this review as long as it is, but girl, y'all love it. That's the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and I will see y'all later. Peace.